Earlier this year, we sat down with the one, the only Brooks Marks we are sharing today. Are you guys loving this season of RHOSLC? I think it is such a return to form season. I know you guys have a lot of mixed opinions on Miss Mary Cosby. I'm loving Mary. You guys know this. But listen, we are going to take a trip down memory lane of RHOSLC today. This is a prior, never before aired chat. Never before aired. We talk about Jen Shaw. So we're just sharing this chat. It's like, you know, the holidays. We're kind of going into the vault lately with some of these chats, which kind of never saw the light of day. We're sharing this here today. Our chat of all things RHOSC with the one, the only Brooks Marks. Happy holidays. You know, like, do you go down that rabbit hole of like reading all the comments? And Because listen, let's face it, there's a lot of lovers and there's a lot of haters. I mean, you could fly in on a unicorn with rainbows, like coming out of your ass. Like people are still going to find the negative to everything. Yeah, I just honestly think that my whole experience with my mom being on the show has been a roller coaster. Like at first it was entirely positive. Everything was amazing. But then, you know, you start to read. There's people that comment on everything out there. Like people have always have something to say, whether it's positive, negative, whatever. And so honestly, reading a lot of criticism got to me for a minute. and. Now I feel like I'm the strongest that I've ever been in that it really, I don't really care what anyone has to say because if you're being truthful to yourself and living your truth and you know what the truth is, like who cares what anyone else has to say? And the people who are close to me in my life, they get me, they know me, like they know what's up. And so some random, you know, middle-aged person in the middle of nowhere commenting, saying that I'm like, elitist just makes no sense so like everyone around me knows that's not true and stuff like that it's just ridiculous right and it's probably a good thing to deal with like early on in the experience because it happens to everyone and then you come out the other end and you're stronger and you learn to just not really care yeah exactly 100 percent do you feel like the same person as when this whole experience started um the same person in terms of like my morals and my core, yeah, a hundred and ten percent. Um, but in terms of like caring about criticism, what people think about me, stuff like that, it's made me much stronger. Well, look, there's it hasn't all been criticism. Like, you know, there you say in the promo for your new growing up reality with Brooks Marks that you are from Salt Lake Housewives and you are the scene stealer, and then you laugh and you blush and it's a joke, but it isn't really necessarily a joke. I mean, that first season, you know, you did go viral. You were like the scene stealer, like people were talking all about you. Like, were you aware of like all the fandom that came right away of like, who is this new Real Housewives kid in our lives? No, cause I just like, I honestly was just living my life, doing what I do. And like the fact that people found it so, I don't know, just felt the need to support me based off of that was like beyond anything I could have ever imagined. I'm like so grateful and appreciative of everyone who's been supportive of me and let alone my brand. Like I've released this track set three years ago and people still buy it to this day. Like that is unheard of in the fashion industry. You know, that stuff goes to TJ Maxx and it's three seasons old and it's crazy. Right. And like you said, like who, who knows where the brand would be, but it certainly hasn't hurt being on this national platform. No. What about, you know, people, and again, like I know you don't care about the criticism and you shouldn't. What about, you know, when people say, you know, it was more them, but they still say like, oh, you know, you left NYU to go home and film a reality show. You took a semester off. You wanted to be on TV. You knew just what this was. You really were a Secret Housewives fan. Uh, I just think it's funny. Like, I just like to poke fun at situations like that. Like, but that's the problem is sometimes when I just make fun of a situation like that, because it like at the end of the day, what we're all commenting on is like social media, the internet, like 
people have nine to fives, people have families to take care of. Like this isn't, you know, the most pressing thing in the world. So I just think it's funny that someone like feels the need to take that much time out of their day to leave such an insightful, like assuming comment on a page. I don't understand it. I mean, people get so enraged and it's like, how do you handle the like things like death and like real serious issues? Like what is going on in your life that this, you have this much anger or whatever towards these issues, right? Yeah. Well, you were, you know, one of the breakout stars of season one, which wasn't really, you know, anticipated, but then, you know, in season two, you know, here's a show, it's about your mother and it's like, you know, she signed up for it and all these women signed up for it, you know, and you really found yourself like, you know, in the middle of like one of the central storylines, like with Jen Shaw or her team, which we found out. And I know you guys have made up like liking these like tweets, you know, these homophobic tweets that were directed towards you. Like, what was that like, you know, not being a cast member, like you, it's about your mother, it's about these women. And yet here you are like a central part of this particular storyline. Kind of weird. I mean, at the end of the day, I was 21 when that was all being filmed. So like I was in a formative year of my life. Like I'm 23 years old now. I'm a full grown adult. I can stand up for myself. I don't need my mom to come for me, even though she will defend me till she dies. But maybe she'll tell me I'm wrong behind a closed door. And um, but it was just like you're at a weird age where you know, you're like, not, you're legally not a kid, but you know, you're still like a kid who's in college and just like not fully an adult. And so it was just weird to navigate that. And um, it was just like a whole, or maybe I was 20. I don't know how old I was, but it was just a really interesting experience for sure. <laughs> well, 23 is still young, but <clears throat> I do understand what you're saying. I mean, did you like, were you shocked? Like, did you have a heads up? Like, you know, like to Bravo, like tell Meredith and Meredith tell you like, hey, you know, you in particular, like this, your sexuality and all this is actually gonna be on this uh, storyline? No. no, I mean, production made sure I was comfortable, of course, but, um inevitably it's an uncomfortable conversation when you're having it for not necessarily for the first time but when it's when you know it's going to be broadcast on national tv yeah i mean that i don't do anything that i don't want to do so like i know what i got myself into and i almost felt more compelled to stand up for what's right, given that this was happening so publicly and I wanted everyone who was watching to know that it wasn't okay. Cause I can't imagine if that's what I was dealing with, what a lot of other people are dealing with on a grander scale. Right, right. Did you ever question like, I just don't want this out, you know, like just to even be a part, like I just don't want to be talked about in general, like at all. Um, no. No, I don't think that I ever really thought